Hello, I'm Rajiv Priyadarshi from PR3 Systems, and if you are a data stage developer, sometimes you definitely get stuck with a problem. And when you get stuck with a problem, you go to DS Exchange. And in DS Exchange, who's the number one helper? Who's called the data stage guru of the world? It's Ray Vurla. And we are very privileged to have Ray Vurla with us right now, who's going to share some of his thoughts. So Ray, can you tell what are some of the top features that you like in 8.5? Hi, Rajiv. Um, Without ranking them particularly, uh, my number one is probably the changes in the transformer stage because I've been asking for them for so long. Uh, they're there now, there's looping, there's some very useful uh, functions for getting or detecting the end of data, end of group, that kind of stuff. So that's going to solve or at least remediate a whole lot of things we had to do in a more complex fashion. And at the conference we've learned that you can get um, a lot less effort for a much bigger result using those. Uh, I also like the new XML pack. It is a brilliant piece of technology and you know, it can do everything you would want to do with XML, plus it's streaming data, so it is not memory hungry. So it can do all the hierarchical stuff. It can go for between hierarchical and flat. Um, it can do hierarchical transformations. It can do vertical pivoting of hierarchical data, which is huge, and yet maintain the hierarchy, and much, much more. We also have the vertical pivot capacity within the parallel pivot stage, which is really cool. And through the Information Services Director, so technically not data stage, um, you can now check in, check out through some standard um, source code control systems like ClearCase and CVS, which will be um, much more smooth than the way we've been doing it for a little while now. So coming back to the same question, what do you think is the number one reason why a data stage project might, fa might fail? And what do you think is the first step that, as a developer, you should take to make sure that your projects are successful? I'll answer the second one first. It's not the developer's role to make sure that the project is successful. It's the project manager's role. And the project has to begin with setting some scope and holding to that scope. So don't let scope creep away. And be really, really aware of the resources you're going to need. Do your metadata imports? Do your profiling? Have all that stuff ready. Business analysts do that. That is not a data stage developer's role. That has to be done and ready and decisions made about, okay, having established these are our sources, these are our targets, where do we go from there? How do we get from source to target? And you could use Fast Track to do that mapping, you could use Excel, I don't care. But as a developer of an ETL task, I want a specification. I don't want to waste my time researching, going back to the business, finding out what all those rules are. That's not my role in the project. I need all that stuff done. And if that stuff is done, I'm going to have 100% success. Coming back to the question, as a data stage developer, you know that there are 101 ways to design a job. What does it take to make sure that the job that you have designed is good from a resource perspective, it's good from a performance standpoint, and if there's a problem, it's good from a restartability perspective? What do you think a developer should do to take care of all of these critical features from a data stage job perspective? The cynical answer to that is get a lot of experience. Um, actually, that's a good answer. Get a design that works first. Okay, Performance doesn't matter. If the thing doesn't work properly, if it doesn't give the right answer, you can run it as fast as you like. It is not a valuable piece of result. Okay, Once you've got it working properly, then you can start tuning it. What to do? Use the tools. Data Stage now has, has had for a little while, a resource estimation tool and a performance analysis tool. There are some more things in 8.5 that help you to do that, and there are more things coming down the track. We've learned that during the roadmap sessions. Be able to monitor your production jobs using another console that they're developing. Not a lot of information about that yet, but we've had a, a few discussions, some roundtable discussions about things we would like to see in that, things we're hating that. So as far as the developer's concerned, this is a best practices area. Okay, There are 
best practices about doing things efficiently. And if you do things efficiently, then you get your performance. It's a side effect. Efficiently, in a single phrase, means not doing anything you don't have to do. So if you need to process 30 columns out of 200, don't read 200, read 30. If you don't need to process all the rows from source, don't extract them from source. That's all stuff you don't have to do. Don't sort unnecessarily. Don't do anything that is memory hungry unnecessarily. But you still need to do all the things that are necessary. And that's, once you've eliminated that and tied it down to minimum work, then you start using your resources, your analysis tools, and that in turn will then give you some strategies. Now your strategies then start getting outside the design and getting into the process. So you'll be allocating your scheduling so that the total resources demanded from your server is around about 100% or slightly below. As soon as you start demanding over 100% of resources, then you start hitting performance issues. Standard rule of tuning computer systems. It's supply and demand. Simple, pure, supply, demand. You demand as much as they can supply, but no more, you get good performance. Thanks a lot, Ray. Truly appreciate your time. Thank, Thank you, you so much.